Hello, and welcome to the Catholic Mama podcast here on YouTube for our Hearth and Homeschool uh, series. I had posted uh, uh, on my stories the other day about a minimalist guide to celebrating Advent. And I got a lot of feedback and people asking, can you please save it? Because I just screenshotted, um, I, I keep a Google Doc of um, my plan, my plan <laughs> for Advent as far as liturgical living goes. And people said, can you please save this in your Instagram stories? And I said, yes, absolutely. So I did save it, but then I thought, you know, maybe I should just do a quick video to explain a little bit more about it. Um, uh, even though it's, it's, it's really minimalist. So, uh, this started, I decided to share, um, my Advent plan. If you can even believe Advent is this close already, um, <laughs> because I had asked for topics that people wanted to hear more about from the Catholic mama. And one said, how do you get started with liturgical living? Either I'm a convert and I don't know how to get started. Or I heard from people who said I'm a lifelong Catholic, but we never did any of this stuff. And now I want to, but I don't know how. Um, and so uh, I've been Catholic for almost four years. And when I first heard about liturgical living, I probably, I mean, it's, I liked it because I like parties and planning and all that stuff but it's really overwhelming because there's a feast day for every single day of the year and if you celebrate all those with fun food you would have um, a one-way ticket to type 2 diabetes probably uh, or some other uh, metabolic <laughs> illness uh, so um, and also it's expensive and and you know the parties kind of start to lose their fun and flair if you are stressed trying to figure this out and do it very very frequently so um, I decided to just show, Hey, this is after four years, this is just what we do for Advent. And, and this is a little bit more involved because it's a, a longer liturgical season, right? During ordinary time, we celebrate maybe one to three saints a month, maybe, um, we just, the, the family favorites and the ones that stick over time. And, and I, I think a big, just as a, a sidebar, as you are developing your own liturgical celebrations and family traditions, they grow you know, they grow over time. Four years ago, um, we would have celebrated St. Patrick's Day and that would have been it. And, um, and then we added a couple more things. And then um, probably about two years ago, I went crazy and did everything and that was too much. Um, and, uh, and then I paired back too much. And now we found a nice, the pendulum swung one way and then the other. And now we're right in the middle and every it, it's good. It's good, but we figured out. So um, don't beat yourself up if you don't know how to start or you see other people doing these really cool involved family traditions, whether Catholic or otherwise, but you haven't gotten there yet. That's okay. Maybe it's not your family. Maybe it's not just something that you're really interested in. Um, or maybe just your family traditions and your, the way you celebrate the Catholic liturgical year hasn't had time to develop and grow, you know, and that's fine too. You'll get there. You'll get there. Uh, we're in it for the long game, right? This is a marathon that we're in trying to instill a love of the faith to our children and do it. So, um, uh, like marketing, right? In marketing, you want different touch points of the of similar or same message to hit somebody from all different ways, you know? So that's why I like having a bunch of different Christmas stories and tell the Christmas, the, you know, the Christmas story in, in a, you know, the specific um, scriptural way, but then also some offshoot ways, which I talked about in the Advent book series um, uh, with the giveaway the other day, by the way, I did announce the winner. I, I just emailed her, Emily. Um, so thank you for doing the review. Um, uh, and, or, you know, you do crafts or activities, or you go see a, a Christmas play or whatever it is. Like you, you have, you have different ways of teaching that same central aspect of the faith, but, uh, you know, that kind of more, um, uh, whole holistic, well-rounded way of, uh, teaching the stories of our faith or the, the uh, central doctrines of our faith. If you do it in different ways over time, that helps to stick more than just one way. So, um, so yeah. Okay. Let me just share what we're doing for Advent. So I've, I pulled it up and I have, you can't see it. It's, it's too blurry. If you go to the Catholic mama on Instagram, I have, it says liturgical. I think I tried to say liturgical year, but there wasn't enough room for it. So if you just see liturgical, there is a screenshot of my Google Doc, so you can see what we're doing. And some of it's still in flux. Um, I haven't quite decided what we're doing um, uh, for like the Feast of the Holy Family and Epiphany yet. I'm not sure, but we'll get there because we don't really have any set family traditions for either of those days. So um, maybe we'll set one this year. I don't know. Maybe it won't stick. Maybe we'll try again next time. Who knows? Okay. So first off, um, the... Um, 
the dates for many of these, besides like the specific days of Advent, um, I'm sorry, the Sundays in Advent, um, the rest of the holidays in the liturgical year stay the same. They're not moving feasts. So uh, we start off um, the day before the first Sunday of Advent. I like to, I've heard it's called the Catholic New Year. Right, our Catholic liturgical year, Christ the King of the Universe Sunday, is the final Sunday in our liturgical year. And the first Sunday of Advent is actually the first Sunday in our Catholic liturgical calendar. So we're a little bit uh, ahead of the, um, the Gregorian calendar. And so our new year falls about um, four-ish weeks before uh, we turn the page or, or put up a new calendar on the wall. And so what I like to do for the Catholic New Year, it's a Saturday evening. Um, we rehang our saint's banner that I made with our, um, our saint prayer cards that I've collected over time. We hang that up on All Saints Day, but I take it down and then we hang it back up on the Catholic New Year. Uh, on All Saints Day, we also choose our saints for the following year. And on our Catholic New Year's Eve, um, I give a brief overview of all those saints that we picked to the kids. And then throughout the year, we'll actually celebrate those saints feast days and each child, depending on their age and their abilities, uh, will help lead the feast day celebration for the saint that they chose. Right. But this, this time for the Catholic New Year's Eve, we hang our saints banner. We do have a brief overview of, um, of the saints we chose on saints day. Um, I love the song old Lang Syne and, um, it's coming close to St. Andrew's feast day, who is the patron of Scotland. So a, a slight liturgical tie in there. So I teach the kids, we, we sing old Lang Syne, um, and, um, and then, uh, if, if I get around to it, I might not this year, but I'm from North Carolina, even though I don't have, really have an accent, I'm from the South. And, uh, and so sometimes on uh, our Catholic new year's Eve, or maybe on the, the regular new year's Eve, we eat some, uh, traditional new year's Eve, um, foods like black eyed peas and collard greens and ham, but I'm not sure if we're doing that this year. I got I got to figure this out. <laughs> I haven't made my shopping list yet for this Saturday. Um, so then the day after that advent begins. Now we purchase, um, a, a make your own beeswax advent candle kit and the kids, there's four of them. And I have four kids. So they each take a turn rolling one of the candles. And, um, then we light the first purple candle and, um, and say the prayers at dinner time, we set up our nativity scene, but only with the stable manger animals and the shepherds. And then, uh, I, there's a side note that I didn't realize <laughs> was still in, um, my, my Google doc, when I screenshot it says swap couch cushion covers for holiday. That's true. I have fall ones. I move it to the, <laughs> the Christmas one. So that might not apply to you. Uh, and also I have a reminder for myself to, to Christmas, finish Christmas shopping. Um, then on Tuesday, which this year it's Tuesday, but every year it's November 30th is St. Andrew's feast day. This is the day where we begin the St. Andrew novena, which you say, um, a lot every day for nine days. <laughs> Uh, I can't think of it right now, but if you just, um, I shouldn't have it memorized because you say it so often uh, by the end of those, those few days there. It's not a traditional novena or is it nine days? You know what? Somebody's listening to me and saying, no, it's not. It's 15. Now I don't remember. Anyway, but same, look, look up St. Andrew Novena Catholic and you can see the prayer. I have everybody write down their prayer intentions for the novena this time. We bake shortbread cookies because Scotland, and then eat um, a, a mangled tradition of Irish and Scottish foods <laughs> for the evening, like beef stew, cold cannon, and uh, the, the shortbread cookies. And that's it for that week, the first week of Advent. The second Sunday in Advent, uh, we light the second candle and say the prayers. Okay, that's simple. We're going to do that every night, you know, at dinner time anyway. Uh, and then the following, um, this year, the following day, after that second Sunday in Advent is St. Nicholas's feast day. It's actually really big in our part of the country in the Midwest. I didn't really pay much attention to it until we moved here. Um, but now that we live in this part of the country and everybody seems to do St. Nicholas's feast day, even if they're not Catholic, um, we, we just amped up our tradition of it and it's, it's, it's nice. So on St. Nicholas's feast day, which is December 6th, we set out the Christmas stockings for the kids. And for that, it's just oranges, their Christmas pajamas, um, some candy. My kids love Pokemon cards. So they'll each get a little booster pack for $5, um, slippers and some stickers. And then, um, we bake gingerbread cookies. And, um, just for my sake, um, if you ever try to bake a bunch with kids, it's good to separate out the, the steps as much as possible. So I'll make some gingerbread house dough. Cause we're going to make our little gingerbread houses this year, instead of doing a kit, which we usually do. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm feeling, 
um, feeling like I have the energy to do it. We'll see. Um, I'll make that ahead of time too, but that's more a note for myself. Um, and then the kids don't get their Christmas stockings on Christmas day. We just do it on St. Nicholas's feast day and then hang them up for decoration after that. Um, this year, every other year, the Immaculate Conception on December 8th is a holy day of obligation. It alternates this year in 2021. It is a holy day. So we'll go to church and we'll talk about it in the car about what the Immaculate Conception is, but that's probably pretty much it. Um, and then personally for us on Friday, um, the 9th, we'll go out and get a Christmas tree and I'll bake the gingerbread house pieces. That's just a note for myself. Uh, and then Saturday, December 10th is our Lady of Laredo feast day. And that has a really cool um, fable or tale along with it that the kids, I like to retell the kids. You can just search for that online and see if you'd like to tell that with your, your, to your children. Um, there's also the litany of Loretto. So we'll pray that as a family. And then if all goes well, we'll be decorating gingerbread houses that day, which goes along with the, the tale of our lady of Loretto. Um, a Sunday, the, the following Sunday is the third Sunday in Advent. That's Gaudete Sunday. So that's like the day where we're, the priests wear the rose colored vestments. And it's like the, the joy we're almost we're almost at Christmas. It's almost happening. So we were the rose or the pink and, um, and celebrate that way. We're going to light our Christmas tree that day. Um, and I'll put up the kids Christmas tree for the dinner that night. We'll, we'll have, or at least dessert we'll have, um, I'm going to make strawberry jam hand pies for everybody with some pink frosting on it, just a pink rose, you know, liturgical. We'll light that pink advent ca calendar and also add Mary and Joseph to the nativity scene. On December 13th is St. Lucia's feast day. That's my patron saint. So we pay a little bit of attention. It's always been my favorite feast day. Um, uh, I like to dress all my kids up, whether they like it or not, in St. Lucia and Starboy costumes. So I'll make really easy, like paper and spare white shirts outfits. This is not anything um, extraordinary or costly. And I just remake it every year because the kids mess it up. <laughs> And then we bake saffron buns and pfeffernusses, which are um, a family tradition. Uh, it's an, uh, an Austrian German spice cookie. So we just make those that day and I freeze them for Christmas. And then we also decorate the outside of the house, right? Lucia brings light into the darkness. So we finally light up the outside of the house. We're getting close to Christmas at this point. So we kind of stagger how we decorate and start the Christmas season, right? We, we do it more slowly um, than, than the, I think the typical, uh, uh, family might, I don't know. Okay. Um, and then December 16th to December 24th is the Christmas novena. It's, um, a little lengthy. The prayers are lovely. You can go to catholicculture.org and search for Catholic Christmas novena and, um, it'll come up. Uh, I've, I have it saved and we just print it off a new one every year. Um, and then, uh, so we do that every evening together as a family. And then uh, a couple of years ago, actually, we did an open house policy where anybody could just come and um, and uh, come over to our house and do the prayers with us. And it worked really well, but we haven't done it since. So that's a, an idea. If you want to invite people over, have a Catholic gathering, you can always invite them for the purpose of between the 16th and the 24th of saying these prayers for you. And it, it was nice. We did a, um, a couple of years ago. We had the prayers for everybody, a holiday snack for the kids, and um, and then a Christmas storybook. <clears throat> and it was it was really sweet. But we didn't, um, we haven't done that since. Okay. And then, uh, and then after that, the 19th for the 2021 year is the fourth Sunday in Advent. So we light the fourth candle, say the prayers, very simple. And then the following the rest of that week, I'm just baking and, um, finishing final prep. Um, I try to keep everything very basic. I don't buy a lot of gifts. I don't like things. I, I'm, I hate clutter. So, uh, we, we try to pare down as much as possible. Plus we have very generous grandparents that, um, that, fill the under the space under the tree uh, a lot. So <laughs> I don't have a lot to do as far as gift um, uh, wrapping goes or shopping or anything like that, but that's purposeful. That's just me. Um, and then um, and then when Christmas Eve rolls around, we'll decorate the tree um, in early evening and have hot chocolate and then get the kids ready to go after having, it's, this falls on a Friday, but we don't eat meat on, um, we don't eat meat any Friday during the year and we don't eat meat on Christmas Eve anyway. So we'll have a meat free fish dinner, maybe fish, um, and then head out to Christmas Eve mass. So that's Advent. I would keep going on what I'm doing for the Christmas season, but I don't really have that planned out yet. So maybe I'll do another video. But after all that said and done, um, and I've explained all this, the screenshot is of all the, of what I just went through. 
is over on Instagram. If you go to the Catholic mama on Instagram and, so, and look at my highlights and look for her liturgical I, first, it'll be the first or second one on there. And you can take a look and see, um, and see what our plan is. Again, we try to do minimalist. Uh, if we go too much, then I get overwhelmed and we don't do it again. <laughs> so we've learned through trial and error that this works well for us. It's a nice gentle way of celebrating the Advent season. Um, and, and still include some fun stuff because we wait until Christmas to celebrate Christmas. So it still kind of builds up as we get closer to Christmas and the kids still have a lot of fun. We do all the stuff that I grew up with, even though I wasn't Catholic. Um, so it, it checks a lot of boxes the way we do our Advent and, um, and it works for our family. So um, I, I invite you to copy and paste whatever you'd like from, from what I've shared or, or you know, do whatever you want. <laughs> Uh, but just, um, give yourself some grace. Don't get overwhelmed. There's no need to. And if you don't get to everything on your liturgical plan this year, well, God willing, there's next year and, um, and you can try again and, and those traditions will grow or, or maybe they just don't work for your family and you won't do them anymore. You know, you'll wait and see. All right. I hope that is helpful and, um, God bless you as we get into the Thanksgiving week and, uh, and Advent again, how did Advent 2021 happen already? I can't believe it's the end of the year. God bless you and until next time.